It was a good idea. We did have this working uh, one time. But, um, we're, we're also going to do some uh, eyesight training uh, because I'm going to turn the screen of the Mac around and then you can watch the display from, from the back. Do you think that would work? Okay, while we're waiting, let, let's try something with hands. Hands get a bit uh, tense using uh, the mouse. And the rather good thing is feeling between the bits of bone on the back of your hand, you feel there are little grooves there. Now take your finger and just massage along that groove and see if you can feel any clickings as you do this. Because that's, again, muscles that can get to the point that I have some friends who have RSI in their hands and they're not able to use a mouse for very long. I had to learn to use a mouse with both hands uh, in order not to get RSI. But can, can you feel any knots just in those grooves there? And then take your fingers like this and our tendency is for the hands to get like that and the gripping a mouse doesn't really help. So a good exercise to do is to get your two fingers, uh, like the two central fingers, and pull them backwards. Hold it for about 10, 15 seconds until you feel it, it, it sort of releases a bit. It stops hurting quite so much. At that point, let it go. And then swap it for the two outer fingers. Pull the two outer fingers back, like that. And then swap over to the other hand, pulling them back like that, just hold it there, not, not so much that it's very painful, but hold it and hold it like that. And then give your hands a shake. Then you can get your hands like this and reach upwards and down. Put your hands in a prayer position like that and get your wrists at right angles. Just hold it there and you can feel a stretch. Just hold it for a few seconds until it feels it sort of releases a bit. And then go back to this and put your arms up like that. That's it. So it's a sort of thing, so some people have screen savers that come in every so often to you know every 10 minutes or every half an hour just to encourage them to do a relaxation exercise otherwise it's quite possible for us to sit developing really good code concentrating on what we're doing for three hours at a time and end up like this so you can't actually move so just every so often take a break take 30 seconds a minute think about something else so your brain can be working in the background and just do some hand exercises some shoulder exercises or some uh, neck exercises. Would it help if I restarted? What, what is it? That, um, do you, you think it's a loose connection somewhere? Maybe, because it's... Um
Right, I'm just restarting uh, the Mac. Uh, while we're doing that, have a think about your legs and feet. So when you sit at your desk, where are your feet? Are they either uh, down too low, so the front of your legs are pointing down, if you're on a chair that's too high, without a footrest, or are they down uh, when your leg is up like that? Because when you're sat comfortably at your desk for maximum relaxation, you should have that part of your arm horizontal and your leg horizontal. So next time you're at your desk, check whether the parts of your arm and leg are actually horizontal. Otherwise, you might need to adjust the height of your desk or the height of your chair because otherwise our bodies sit there all day compensating for the uh, difference in, from how we should be sitting. Um, that, that's not a real TV, that's my key for the presenter. Right, while we're um, just changing over computer, a little exercise for you here. Uh, we're going to be looking later at how you can massage <coughs> usefully uh, letters, namely anagrams. So <coughs> uh, have a think uh, of two anagrams. We want uh, an anagram of lightning talk man and an anagram of Guido Van Rossum. Okay, so just, just have, have a think about that for a, a minute. You have keynote on, yeah. on it. Yeah. Right.
damn vigorous sun. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Good. Okay. Um, massaging uh, numbers and other things uh, is uh, good for you. Can everyone hear me okay? Uh, is, is the mic, mic on? Okay, yeah? Good. Um, what we're going to look at uh, today is um, Italy's uh, a li little bit of massage history. Um, massaging numbers in uh, finance, massaging uh, letters, uh, how anagrams will help you refactor legacy code, and uh, massaging necks and shoulders, uh, particularly uh, the main point, uh, fundraising for the Python Software Foundation. So what we do tomorrow night at the meal is to go around <coughs> and collect uh, money from people for giving them the service of a nice relaxing two or three minute uh, massage and people will happily donate money either to have a massage or not to have a massage. They have a choice but they don't have a choice about whether or not they donate uh, the money. That's the idea and what I'm hoping is that from uh, this afternoon we need some help because uh, it's not possible for me to get around everybody uh, particularly there are so many people here we've got a large group having a meal and we need lots of help to make sure everybody gets the opportunity to have a massage and to donate to the Python Software Foundation. And there are a number of people to make up a team that I need some help. So think about this as we go through the presentation and practical. So we need a massage team manager and planner because what tends to happen is uh, that I'm not very good at coordinating where everybody is and saying, oh, yes, we've got a group over there that needs to be done. and that's, So it needs someone who's good at doing that. Nothing to do with massage, but to do with organizing people in the right places at the right times between courses, knowing that all the restaurant is covered and everybody has been uh, properly massaged. So if you're an organizing, managing, and planning type, please come and see me afterwards. Um, we need a bucket organizer. So... It's surprisingly untrivial to find the right sort of bucket in which to collect the money, and we need uh, quite a few of them. So best not to turn up at the restaurant and say, oh, um, do you happen to have any buckets? Because some places do and some places don't. So a bucket organiser who can get all the necessary equipment we need. Uh, collectors carrying a bucket, because we would rather uh, like some help going around. If somebody is doing a massage, they can't simultaneously be relieving other people of their money. So the idea is you go around in a pair, one person does the massage, one person rattles the, uh, the, the bucket to collect the money. Uh, then, most importantly, we need some trainee massage therapists. You don't have to be an expert in order to be able to uh, do the uh, massage. What we're going to learn this afternoon is sufficient to be able to do some massage sufficient to get people to feel a bit relaxed and hopefully you will feel that later we'll be trying it uh, in pairs we'll get together and massage each other's necks so you get an idea of what's involved um, and last thing that I've 
uh, learnt it's not a good idea to remember after everybody's gone that you've got to count the money because people put lots of different denominations and different currencies into the buckets and sorting them all out and getting them to a bank uh, is a difficult task. So if anybody is uh, keen on helping but doesn't want to actually do the massage, come and count some money. So that's uh, a little bit of uh, request we'll be coming to later. Uh, so <clears throat> I flew into Bologna on Sunday and had a walk around <clears throat> in the 37 degrees heat rather slowly and discovered that uh, rather like Pisa, Bologna has these um, leaning uh, towers, ha had a lot more towers but quite a few of them appears have, have fallen down and it's uh, quite difficult to <clears throat> uh, photograph uh, a leaning tower because when you look at it in a photograph that just appears to be a bit of perspective trying to get near a vertical wall but if ever you've been to Pisa or Bologna and you actually look at a leaning tower we're so used to seeing things upright that it is rather um, strange when you actually see a building that isn't upright because we see it in three dimensions so uh, the problem of course in the <clears throat> 13th century was that there was a bit of massage going on that um, the uh, <clears throat> stones and bricks that make up the towers, they, they found that they could massage their figures a bit by shaving off um, <clears throat> the, the sides of the bricks. So if, if a brick was sort of 1 or 2% thinner, then they could sell them for the same price and make a little bit more profit. This wouldn't have mattered had they been randomly distributing the uh, bricks. But unfortunately, there were two teams building these towers, and they used to have a race and one would do one side of the bricks, the other would do the other side of the bricks. And just occasionally, if you got one of these massaged supplies of bricks, you'd get uh, the situation here where uh, it points out 3.2 metres off the vertical, where just a load of thin bricks went up one side. Very unfortunate. That's probably my best photograph for actually showing how massaged the figures were. But we have massage in finance these days. It's not just a problem from the 13th century. Barclays Bank, fined for attempts to manipulate the LIBOR rates. I didn't really realise what LIBOR rates were, but it seems that the say <clears throat> to each other the interest rates that they think they would uh, be charged if they needed to borrow money from other banks. <clears throat> uh, and this gives a uh, base for lots of interest rates across the world. and. 20 banks participate, uh, they each think up an interest rate that they're likely to be charged and they put it into the pool. We lose the top four rates and the bottom four rates, which might be too extreme, and then the middle <coughs> rates from the remaining 12 are then, uh, a mean is taken of those and that comes uh, to be <coughs> the LIBOR rate. And on that rate, lots of other transactions are based. Uh, the Prime Minister in launches <coughs> uh, bank inquiry because what Barclays Bank were doing were massaging the financial rates such that they realised if they could put in a rate that <coughs> wasn't actually uh, correct, that they could move slightly the rate uh, up or down, as long as they weren't too extreme so they were knocked off the end as being one of the extreme four at either end. So they would discuss with their traders, would you like the rate to be a little bit higher than it should be or a little bit lower than it should be? The point about financial massage software is it has to go in both directions because sometimes you want things to go up a bit, sometimes you want things to go down. Now, lots of Python developers work in finance, so uh, we figured that learning how to uh, massage things in a way that we don't get FBI investigating us is probably a good idea for getting jobs in finance and when you get found out I mean you, you look there that's Barclays share price dropping so it is essential that we uh, find sort of ways to disguise things I, I'm working for a, a major client who has uh, these sort of aims in mind so I can't actually obviously divulge the detail of this but just explain <coughs> the uh, principle now <coughs> the <coughs> Uh, way we can uh, do this, if you imagine uh, we have um, 
we bring up a Python console, and uh, we're typing um, 8 plus 8. That would give us an answer of 16, and everything's uh, happy. Uh, but if we wanted to change that a little bit, we would say, well, I'd like a different answer from 16 without anybody realizing. So what we do, uh, and maybe if you've got a computer, you might like to try this because I haven't uh, here, so I'll just describe and you can follow. Bring up a Python console, and we can try um, int of str 8 plus 8. And that would also give us 16. However, um, we want to... Uh, massage the race a little bit, and the principle of my uh, idea for undetectable financial massaging is that we just do our arithmetic in a different base. So we, after the int str 8 plus 8, put a comma 9. Uh, that then means that the integer conversion will be done <coughs> base 9, and the answer will come out as 17 instead of uh, 16. Nobody will notice uh, the difference. That's the, the principle. Alternatively, we might want to reduce uh, the apparent profit or whatever it is, in which case we do int str 8 plus 8 comma 11, and out comes the answer as 15. Now, the uh, two things that are the uh, confidential bits is uh, how one disguises the fact that we're doing this because we have to override the... Uh, built-in operators in Python, which is a bit uh, tricky. Uh, and also, we have to get it to work in uh, a slightly new arithmetic because uh, Python has this bug that when you try to do int to base 9.9995, it doesn't work. But with my import massage module, that will now be something that will be undetectable way of doing some financial manipulation. Moving on to letters, we're going to look a bit, when I swap over to the iPad, uh, at what we can do with <coughs> massaging um, the... Oh, thanks. Uh, So, massaging letters with anagrams. Uh, and I've uh, discovered uh, my favorite anagram website, the Internet Anagram uh, Server, whose anagram is I Rearrangement Servant. Uh, and their motto is, if you torture words enough, uh, you can make them say anything. So here's some massage of um, some words. So to, to start with, Let's start with <clears throat> lightning talk man. So an appropriate one for, for Harold. Um, when the lightning talks come to a halt, what does he need uh, to do? To mint a link. Very appropriate uh, name. Guido Van Rossum. Guido was saying um, <clears throat> how it was that he prefers uh, Emacs to uh, Vim, uh, but may have to uh, learn... Vim uh, as a preferred language uh, for the editor one day, in which case he becomes a soon sad Vim guru. Right, massaging legacy code. Um, <clears throat> the presentation here is a bit more sensible in that we're looking at what do you do with legacy code. You have uh, some code that is uh, not... Um, very good, defined in Michael Feather's book as basically not tested code. Anything that isn't tested, however well written or documented it is, can be counted as legacy code. And there are basically uh, the problem that you've got old code in your system and entropy is increasing. The second law of thermodynamics, uh, you will find that code just deteriorates unless we actively maintain it. And what happens is that part of the code 
becomes like resin. Instead of it being like blue tack, nice and malleable, we get bits of code that you can't change, like a <coughs> piece of resin. We want our code to remain uh, flexible. And it, in fact, becomes a necrotizing pie resin, where bits of the code are actually dead. You don't know which bits you can get rid of, <coughs> but uh, it is not a very good way to have your code uh, developed. So what's the cure? There's a cure on three levels. One on the coding level, one on the uh, design level, and one on the social level. So on the coding level, we start with entropy is increasing. And we put in a few nice prying assertions to make sure that we can test the code in the way we want. Uh, Python has the ability to uh, inspect, saying er in nice uh, places. And we get no passing. I keep retrying. Nice. Uh, no tiny errors escaping. If I've got 100% <coughs> test coverage, then I'm a lot more happy about it not being legacy code and being able to be maintained. Um, we can use uh, nosy <coughs> recipes, uh, the nose and pi dot test, test runners, and of course the people who are writing the code need training in how to get themselves organized to do the test driven development in the right, the right way in the first place. But we also have to look at uh, it from the design point of view. So we want to massage the problem of entropy is increasing um, and think of our code as uh, containers that uh, we don't want a big bad ball of mud. We chop our pie code up into containers which rain. Uh, we set up a nice REST <coughs> API so that we have different web services talking to each other uh, independently and we can get the different regions of our project in sync with each other without them having to bring each other into tests to be able to uh, test everything. And of course I have to document what it is so it's necessary that I go into uh, print. Lastly there's the social aspect. The reason we get legacy code in the first place, um, entropy is increasing. Sometimes we have egoists on the team, and egoists don't like it. They cry inner pain when you say, we must work together. So there's a lot of noisy, precise ranting when <coughs> the sales team comes in and says, why isn't that feature ready? There's one simple feature I wanted, and you said it would be ready in three months, and that was six months ago, and it's still not ready. They're not criticizing the whole code base, just this one precise point. But alternatively, there may be entire carpings about the state of your code, which is being completely useless. Development has ground to a halt. We want to turn this around. And we do it by setting up pairing centers, where we get people working together in pairs so that no one person has a center of knowledge. We can join uh, together and share that knowledge. And that then leads to lots of recent praising. So we can uh, encourage each other uh, and noisy praising, hey, yes, we met the deadline. So in summary, what can we do to massage out the entropy is increasing. Well, we say sorry because we're doing it wrong <coughs> and we want to do development uh, properly. We admit that there's a problem. We then get everyone signing in and committing to the solution and then inevitably just a lot of patience means that the problem will be solved. And that's massaging letters for entropy is increasing and solving the problems of legacy code. Now we need to switch back. Thank you. Right.
So just while we're switching back, uh, we're coming to the, the practical part of what we're doing. So what I need you uh, to do, the idea is, uh, first of all, we're going to do a little bit on massaging your own uh, shoulders. Then we're going to get into pairs and uh, find somebody of a similar build uh, to you and uh, move the chairs around a bit. We're going to do some massaging. But first of all, just to get the idea, put your hand on your right shoulder like this. Support the elbow with the other hand. And just there, can you see where I'm massaging there? Just feel for knots just above the shoulder blade. And you might well be able to feel a little knot. As you press there, it cracks a bit. And massaging like that can be very helpful when you're tense. And this is the sort of thing you're trying to do when you massage people. Now swap hands, support this one with this hand. Like that. Okay? Yeah. Right, thank you. So, um, <clears throat> now's the time to get uh, stand up and might need to make sure your computer's uh, folded away somewhere. <clears throat> Go and find somebody uh, who, preferably someone you don't know, introduce yourselves, uh, name and where you come from, <coughs> and uh, get together and find a space. Make a space between the chairs, because one of you is going to sit on the chair and one of you behind the chair. Right, now, now we, we need some equipment, and if we were <clears throat> advanced uh, massage people, uh, what we'd be doing, uh, Chessington Zoo in uh, Surrey offers a certain type of <clears throat> massage, which is, uh, they say, very relaxing. Um, actually, with a, a python, they have uh, the animal crawls over somebody's back, uh, but we're not actually going to use that sort of <clears throat> uh, equipment because the sort of equipment that we need is basically just your fingers and your knuckles, like that. So, <clears throat> uh, it will be helpful if uh, somebody would uh, come and be a, uh, a guinea pig. Would anybody like, like to come and uh, sit, sit on a chair and I'll just show what needs to be done? Thank you. Hello, I'm Rob. Oh, right, okay. No, I won't do anything. Uh, so, stand behind uh, the person you're giving the massage to. So, at this point in the meal, we've already done uh, the bit where um, we've uh, said, would you like a massage, and they've... Uh, getting the, the money out and queuing up because it's going to be so popular. Um, and you put your hands on the shoulders like this. And the idea is we'll do this and we'll swap around a few times so, so that you each get a go. Do please feel free, everyone else, to, to, to join in. It isn't... Look, <clears throat> I need to say it's not too embarrassing touching somebody else. <laughs> that... Um, Often developers are used to touching keyboards, but really it's fine. Uh, we're just doing this on the shoulders like this and helping somebody to relax. So, first of all, put your hands and just press down gently. And then stop pressing. Sort of pull your hands up, but don't actually take them off. And you do this three times. That just gets the person ready for something else. And there's a number of techniques we're going to look at. First of all, move your thumbs around. So you're moving your thumbs <coughs> like this. 
And what this is doing is just warming up the muscles a bit, and you're looking for some knots. You're trying to feel where there might be some knots, some hard bits of muscle where the lactic acid can't get out. Uh, the muscles have gone into spasm, and if you can release the knots, can you feel a little knot j j just there? You'll feel it as you're moving your thumbs. It clicks. So move the thumbs around like that. Uh, then when, when you found, has anyone found some knots? When you find a knot, just concentrate on that and just press on it. Just, just press. Not too hard. If the person can't stand the pain, then you're pressing a little bit too hard. <laughs> But right, having done the thumbs like that, the, the idea is as you practice, you will uh, vary the, the techniques. We have to just show you the basic things you might do. That, that's one technique. Then you can take the heel of your hand like that and use that just again on the shoulders, down the back a little bit like that, along the top of the shoulders, um, and with the other hand... Again, not, not too hard, we're just, just warming up like that. Right. You might do this a little bit longer than I'm showing you to start with, because then I'll get you to practice it. Uh, the next one is a sort of chopping motion, like this. So you just go like that, nice and gently, down the shoulders, around the neck, and then the other side, like that. So there's the thumbs, the palms, the edges of the hands, like that. And then if you're finding that the person says, can you do it uh, a bit more strongly? Because one of the things that is not much use with massage is just tickling somebody, like that. Often when people start doing massage, they're afraid of doing it too hard. Now, the person you're massaging will tell you if it's too hard, but a little bit of, oh, oh yes, we're on the knot there. That, that, that's good. So <clears throat> the way to be able to, if you found a good knot and you want to do a little bit more, you've got an elbow and an arm. So you can use the flat of your arm there. <clears throat> or if you uh, want a little bit more, <clears throat> got the elbow, get in on the knot like that with the elbow. And that, that one, <coughs> really, uh, you can uh, help somebody, but don't do it too hard. OK? <coughs> so just, just for a couple of minutes, uh, try a variation of those different techniques, and then we'll come back to working on the neck. OK, so j j just, just carry on for a little bit. Thank you. Uh, no, don't go away. I'll, I'll, I'll just sh sh show the, the, the next part in a minute. That, that, uh, thank you, Vince. Yeah? Is, is it um, okay? Okay, <clears throat> now uh, swap rounds. Sw swap your pair over so uh, the person who was being massaged is now massaging. So start with the three presses down on the shoulders. This is just like your hands saying hello to this person's shoulders so they get used to you and it helps them uh, relax. Then move the thumbs around. Find a few knots. 
the palms of the hands and the, the edges like that. Generally, for safety reasons, keep off the spine that you, you can uh, do very little harm if you're just doing the muscles either side of the spine, but don't actually manipulate the spine unless you're a trained chiropractor. Okay, so let's just try that for a few minutes. Yes, yes, good. Not, uh, not. Have Okay, um, <clears throat> right, that, that would be about half of the massage session tomorrow, which is the part from the shoulders down. And then we now just do a few things on the neck and up onto the head, and then that would be the session finished. So get your hands like this, and... We're just going to squeeze gently around the back of the neck. Not, nothing too hard, but just massaging the muscle. You've got very stiff muscles here often supporting the skull. So you might feel on your own neck. So just put your hands around there and feel the muscles that are going up the back of your neck. And that's what you're wanting to uh, help relax here. So just try that you know, up and down the side of the neck. And then the, these muscles join into the skull just at the bottom here and it can be very helpful just to push the fingers, your fingers underneath that edge of your skull there like, like that. So you put your hand there and you're just massaging the bottom of the skull where the Muscles join on. And then, if someone has a headache, massaging the temples, where you do this on your temple like, like that, can, can be very, very helpful. And then lastly, just with your fingers on the scalp, moving the scalp. Moving different parts of the scalp around like that. And then back to the neck. And while you're doing it, talk to the person and get some feedback as to how they're feeling, whether, whether they like to be massaged harder or softer, whether uh, they're enjoying it, or if they'd like you to stop now. Okay, right, let, let's, let's swap over. Um, and the other way around do the neck and head massage again. So just gently up the muscles at the side of the neck, underneath the 
the skull, the sides of the head, and the top of the head. That, that's um, finished the practical bit, so thank you very much. Right, well, <clears throat> uh, you've, you've got the, the idea there what, what's uh, needed. So thank you very much for participating. Do, do sit down again. Um, <clears throat> so something you, you might like to uh, think about is uh, you have <clears throat> friends and colleagues who don't necessarily realize the benefit of being uh, massaged. I have some regular massage of my shoulders and uh, neck and back and so on and feel a lot better uh, for it and something you might want to practice with uh, friends and family uh, later but for the conference now <clears throat> what we need is uh, these people to be involved so a massage team manager and planner bucket organizer collectors to carry a bucket, trainee massage therapists, and people to uh, count the money. Now, probably <coughs> the uh, best way for me to do it is not to do it with a show of hands in the formal session, but just to say we've got 10 minutes left of this session. So thank you very much for uh, coming and listening and joining in. And if you're interested in helping tomorrow night, we need to get there 15 minutes earlier than uh, the actual meal starting just to make sure we've got everything set up and working and do come up here to the front and uh, my role is to take some uh, names and pass things on to the person or people who might like to organize the thing so uh, any any questions Are we? Um, I'm just asking if being a helper in this precludes you from going to the dinner in some oh, way. Right, right. No, m most of us uh, will be going to the dinner normally. We eat uh, the meal normally, but <clears throat> uh, the, the, the tricky bit and the reason it does require some planning is that between courses, uh, and just before the meal starts and just after it's finished, those are the opportunities for going around and offering uh, massage to people. So they've only got a few minutes, and it needs to be quite well organized to cover everybody. But the idea is we, we have the meal as well. So it's not, sorry, I <coughs> hope you didn't get the idea. It was either eat a nice meal or do massages. <laughs> so, no, no. Okay, cool, thanks. Hi. So last year we did some massages during the coffee breaks and lunch as well. Should we do it again for the rest of the week? Because we collected some money that way as well. We, we did indeed. If uh, <coughs> other times that we can find, that would be a really great idea if, if we could do that. Sort of set the tone for people 
giving uh, money for massages. And if we can find some other times, that, that's uh, good, yes. Thank you. Uh, can you recommend some materials on self-massaging during the working day just to feel better? Um, yes, I, I'll um, got some books that I can uh, talk to you about. Uh, uh, I, su I suppose you don't have a list uh, to show on the slides? Huh? Um, I, I don't, but I, okay. I will be able to email uh, a, a list. There, there are some very good books on um, exercises to do at work particularly because the difficult thing is uh, you can't do a lot of physical exercise if in the little break that I take between my hour of work I stand up and start to do this in the middle of the office then I get rather few funny looks but uh, one of the things that is recommended is to get a gym ball and actually sit on a gym ball rather than a chair. And, and that can help uh, strengthen muscles and help the balance of the spine. And also there are some books that have very good exercises you can do surreptitiously you know, with your feet or arms or this sort of thing that d doesn't draw attention to yourself in a busy office. Okay. Yeah, I think we are done. Um, okay, if you th thank you again, Rob. <laughs> so we will just gather here. I think. Yes, that's it. So thanks very much for coming, but don't go away. <laughs>